I'm comparing two white performance Hondas, the 2023 Civic Type R and the 2024 Acura Integra Type S. Front wheel drive, manual, turbocharged gas engines, not a shred of electricity in these two cars. And today at Palmer Motorsports Park in Massachusetts, I'm gonna put them to the test on the track in a closed circuit condition and show you all of the differences these two cars have. And believe me, it's more difference than just $8,000 in price. Let's go. If you couldn't afford the Acura NSX supercar, this is the next best thing. The Integra Type S or the Honda Civic Type R. For under $60,000, these are four-door sedans with plenty of practicality and space for the regular commute and tons of track-focused performance for when you really want to have a good time. Honda makes a great four-cylinder engine and it's even better when it's turbocharged. Two liters, 310 pound-feet of torque from 2,600 RPM, which is rather high. It's not very low end there off idle, all the way up to 4,000 RPM. The difference, this is five more horsepower on the Acura for a total of 320 versus 315. And in doing so, it actually gets one MPG less on the EPA city cycle. You get high in the 20s on the highway if you're driving comfortably. However, if you go on a track at any time, expect those numbers to drop very, very far. Six-speed manual transmissions, that's it. Front wheel drive, that is it. And this is a slightly brighter shade of red than that. There's a problem when you stuff too much power into a front wheel drive car. All of the weight off the line, that transfer, goes to the back, and that means you lose traction in the front. So to compensate for that, Honda and Acura have fitted some of the widest front tires you'll find in a production car, 265 millimeters in width. And in front, you're getting red Brembo brakes, just like the Civic, 19-inch wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. There's also another challenge, accelerating while you're turning. Honda and Acura fix that by having a limited slip differential as standard, so that can vary the torque split left and right. It also has a special suspension setup. It's actually a dual axis McPherson. If you look at it, it's kind of complicated, but what that does is it reduces all of the transfer of forces from the steering and the acceleration. So that means that the tire is as level as possible. When that contact patch is as level as possible with the road, you're getting the maximum torque transfer, which means more fun, more of the time. It's a little misty today and the track is very damp, so I'm not gonna be even approaching the limits on the Integra Type S or the Civic Type R. But just know that there is plenty of power at all times. Because on this track, it's very windy and it never, ever, ever gets straight. And the great thing is, at the speed we're doing, keeping it in third gear, keeps this engine in peak torque. Because these engines are a little peaky. Despite modern turbocharging, the maximum amount of torque does not hit until 2600 RPM. So off the line, you kind of get that laggy feeling of old. But when you're in the power band, like now, there's a lot of understeer. Oh, that's, that's no getting around that on a damn track with front wheel drive, okay. But imagine everything was perfect and this engine damn near pretty much is. Steering feel, I don't know, even, the steering is just slightly less communicative than the Civic Type R. It's just ever, ever so minor. And that's owing, I think, to the Integra being more of the road car versus the Civic, which is the track car. It's the difference between S and R. But everything that I really loved, whoa, everything that I really loved about driving on the street, <laughs> it doesn't, uh, doesn't always correlate to the track. And that's really the thing about front wheel drive cars is just that all the weight, the majority of it is on the nose. So you're never gonna have the balance of a rear wheel drive car. It's just no matter what you do to the suspension and the steering and the tires, we could have tires that were a foot wide. It wouldn't make a difference. So that's the only frustrating thing about these cars is because mm, if it was all wheel drive, like a Subaru WRX, it'd be a different ball game.
So while this Integra is definitely not really a track car, I found during my time that on the street, you can approach levels that you wouldn't think you could in a front wheel drive car when the surface is dry. And you can power into turns and power out earlier without worrying about understeer. Just that on a day like today, I can't really show you that. But take it from me, it really, really works. You get in a highway on-ramp in the Integra, you'll be blown by people and you never would have thought that was possible in a front wheel drive car, but it's tuned really, really well. What I also like on our off track is the fact that this exhaust is much louder. And you get pops and bangs, I absolutely love that. On the Civic, it's meant to be an international car, and there's all sorts of noise restrictions and regulations going on, but not here in the United States, at least not most of the states. So they really uncorked it, let more sound come through. It's not quite as crash and bangy as the Elantra N, so watch that review, but it's really loud. It's just another reminder that the Integra is just extra special because only for the North American market, this is not a global car. So that kind of adds to the appeal. Another thing that may not be as good as the Civic Type R are these seats. They're definitely more comfortable, they're powered, they're heated, which you can't get in the Civic. But there's no adjustable bolstering, so they really just plucked these seats out of the RDX, called it a day. I mean, they are comfortable, don't get me wrong, but on this car, I would have liked to have seen those kind of custom one-piece buckets that you're getting with that Type R, especially for this price, because we're talking over 50 grand, and I really do feel like I am sliding around. And if you think I'm sliding around, well, Michael Venn in my right-hand side is really with the, about trying to balance this camera as I'm doing this. So this is not quite the track car that you can put two people in and truly feel like you're snug. Thankfully, wet or dry, the brake pedal feel is excellent. And all the grip on these tires is just fantastic when it comes to stopping. Already the Civic Type R reminds me that it is truly a track car. Got the LEDs flashing sirens wailing at me to shift because it's not going to do it for you. The Acura and the Honda are both manual only and I think it's time that I really just write a thank you letter to Honda for keeping it around so long and constantly improving it. The travel of the shifter is just so short but it's so precise. You always know where it's going. And the Type R, I know these are the same car but to me the clutch take up is just easier to find than it is in the Integra because at street speeds, I found myself stalling and I own a manual car and drive manuals all the time, but it wasn't as easy for me to get acclimated as it is in this Type R. I'm not sure what that is, but it's just such a joy to drive, even though. Again, the conditions are less than ideal for a front-wheel drive car. But once this power comes down... Oh my goodness. You don't have any of the pops and bangs and open exhaust like you do in that Integra, but to me, that would be an easy aftermarket fix. Drop a few grand in the aftermarket and you'll still come in cheaper than that Type S. And on track, these seats, they are so much more supportive. They're not the most aggressive buckets like you'll find, say, a BMW M2 or a Porsche GT4, but they're way more supportive and they don't get in the way during regular driving. And on track, like, this is definitely what I want to have. Plus, it just looks cool. Really, red seats up in the front, black in the back. I mean, they look really awesome but they are truly functional. They're doing the job right now. Another thing that the Integra does not have that this Civic does, 
all the readouts in real time. I'm not looking at them, but all these numbers flashing by, it's showing you oil pressure, it's showing you G readings, everything in real time, except tire pressure, couldn't find that one. But it's just more race focus, it puts more of that information at a glance when you need it. And then the way this car is dialed in, I'm in what's called the plus R drive mode setting, is if you drop it down, there is a sport mode and you can customize it also like you can in the Acura with individual. But sport plus is as far as the Acura goes. Type R has the plus R mode. Still has the automatic rev matching, which I do like on a track. I know you can heel toe. I'm not really too good at it. On a track like this, that's always very windy. Again, <laughs> gotta be so judicious with the throttle because there's just no traction. That's really my, really just biggest gripe with these cars is that if it's less than ideal conditions, you don't have the full experience that you would say Volkswagen Golf R, Subaru WRX, those cars constantly with their all-wheel drive systems can put the power down in any condition. And I would not be having these issues right now were I in one of those cars. But I get where Honda's coming from here. This is a mass market car, one of the most popular cars in the world. The Civic has been on sale everywhere for decades. And creating a race ready version out of this car, it's not an easy task, but on the right road, you can tell they hit all the marks. I guess really what I would like to say is how thrilled I am to be driving a brand new car with a stick shift, with a fully gas engine. Because this is not gonna be a car for everybody. It's really not. You're paying a lot of money, paying almost double the cost to get into this Civic Type R and even more in that Acura. But look what you're competing against. You're competing against cars like an Audi S3. Mercedes CLA, other luxury grade competitors that are not as raw, that are not as balanced either when it comes down to it. I get the sound and the fury, that's the raw part, but all the finesse comes from that front axle and the steering, which is just fantastic. That's what you have to remind yourself. And the great thing about these two is that when you settle down, you actually do have a pretty decent commuter car, although the Civic Type R does ride a little harsher, not much, than that Integra. There's also not quite the same amount of creature comforts, but really, I don't really care about that at the moment. Phenomenal, as it should be. The Integra is a half inch wider than the Civic, and it's also five inches longer. How can that be? Well, it's actually just the body overhangs and the fenders. These are definitely a little wider. They're more tacked on than what you see in the Civic. It's kind of surprising on this car. But if you look at the front, this nose, it really juts out more. The Civic is flatter. All of that just adds to the five inches. They're just bigger overhangs because the chassis and the wheelbase are completely unchanged. Now what you'll find underneath on the Type S is functional air and brake cooling ducts where on the Civic, if you notice on those outer flanks, they're actually sealed, kind of like a Toyota Supra. But everything else is lowered. You're getting that Type S logo, but you're getting also the functional hood scoop, just like the Civics. Everything else carries over. And it's not just the fact that this body is a little swoopier looking, and that even though it doesn't have that rear wing, it is very, very aggressive for what Acura calls a luxury car. You might think the Acura, because it's more expensive, has a smoother, more finely crafted body. But these fender flares, the door trim, the sills, they're more tacked on than anything that you'll find on that Civic Type R. The body is totally different. And even though it does look pretty racy, it has a more tuner looking vibe than the Civic. 
The Type R used to be kind of a mess. It had fins and wings all over the place. Looked kind of ugly, but now it's the prettier car. It actually looks less of a Japanese tuner car than that Acura Integra. It's kind of weird to say that because this is the Honda and this is supposed to be the crazy racer version. Type R in Japan is a massive, massive deal if you know what it is. But if you don't, it looks more like a Civic Si, which is some extra badging and extra touches, like this hood scoop, for example, that's fully functional. There's also a bigger radiator. I love how you can see that through the grill. Nice black mesh going on. But it's definitely a more subtle car than the Acura in every measure. And looking at it up close, I never expected it to be that way. But I like it. Compared to the Acura, the Civic just has some nice flowing body lines. Everything just has nice forms and creases. And white is not an easy car to pull off because it would show if anything was tacked on. There's nothing. And even this black piece on the bottom, which is extra aerodynamics with this little fin ahead of the rear door, it just looks really good. I like how all the trim goes on. I like how the black wheels and the red center caps here, that's all just for looks. But in terms of function and design, this is the better car. And I think it's gonna last a little longer than that Integra, but it's again, it's a question of style, not of function. Well, there is one thing that is tacked on, this big wing, but it's smaller than before and it's now black instead of body color, so it hides and actually looks more decorative than before, but it's not decorative. It's really there for performance because Honda has set some Nürburgring lap times that they did not do in the Integra Type S. And even though you can get a little deck lid spoiler on the Acura, this is the one you want for real track time. Aside from that big wing, look down at the exhaust tips. This one has a bigger center outlet than the other ones. This one's all symmetrical. And the taillights, just a little more sweepy. I like this kind of like kind of chicane track look here. It's also full LED and this is not. Those are incandescent bulbs, but this being based on the Civic hatchback has a rear wiper and that can help. Both cars are practical for every day, but the Honda has a lower load height, which means it's easier to get all this stuff in here. And it also has 0.2 cubic feet more space. It's probably due to the shape in the side and also that this has a big subwoofer in the back, which this car does not. The Acura seats, they're more like conventional crossover seats. This is powered, it's heated, which you can't get in the Civic. This passenger seat is manual, which I think should be powered. And really it's just all about comfort. You can stretch out and if you're fatter, you definitely want the Acura. There's more colors available in the Integra versus the Civic. And on the right passenger side, there's more padding. There's just more trim and slightly restyled air vents. Otherwise, it is the same car. For the extra money, you're getting better leather and Alcantara inserts. And on the back, you're getting full leather seats that are all red, whereas the Civic is black. I just think this is a slightly more upscale experience. Not by a lot, but it is noticeable. If you're into red, well, the carpet matches these seat belts and these hip hugging seats and shoulder hugging. The material's not quite as nice. This is really more felt like than Alcantara, but I gotta say, if you're into race mode, this is the car for you. The Civic already had a really high quality interior and you don't get anything that much more for the extra money of a Type R, but you get this badge on the dash, you get the aluminum shift knob and a few extra buttons here and there, but it's the red carpet that is just so bleeding, blindingly red, and that might be a turnoff. Because this red and black interior is the only interior you can get, it does keep the Civic cost down. And what's also unique about both of these cars is that that back seat is only for two. So this is a four seater. The infotainment systems are identical. They're nine inch touchscreens with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get all the usual Honda features here, color-coded tiled icons, but the Type R has the Honda Logger app. And here, you can basically log all your data from different racetracks. You can also see real-time data because all of this stuff is just fun to watch. Does it do anything really on the road? Well, you can put it in 3D and if you really just kind of want to see this car move around a bit, it's kind of interesting just from a visual standpoint, but you cannot get that on the Acura and the Civic Type R also has navigation, which the Acura doesn't have, which is a little weird. The 10 inch digital instrument panel is identical for both cars as well, but only in the Civic Type R do you get this special readout that shows a tachometer as a horizontal readout and also has LED lights so when you're driving, you'll know exactly when to shift. There's also multiple engine readouts, similar functions that you can find on the main touchscreen, but it's a little racier than you'll find in that Acura. The 2023 Honda Civic Type R starts at 43,795. The 2024 Acura Integra Type S starts at $50,800. When you add up the options, and they're 
basically aren't any, it's just paint. The Acura is 52,595, the Honda 45,345. So for a little over seven grand, yes, you're getting a few extra features on the Integra, but is that enough? If you want a more luxurious experience, especially that plusher interior and some more amenities, perhaps the Acura is for you. If you don't care about any of that and you just want the raw numbers and that big wing, then the Civic will do. Either of these cars drives fantastically, you would have to put them through their paces for hours to truly discover each nuance, so you're not making a wrong decision and you're not actually sacrificing with either of them. This one just costs a little bit more. That's it. If you want even more detail, go to cargurus.com, read the full reviews on both these cars, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, special thank you to Palmer Motorsports Park for letting us come out here today. We'll see you next time.